Bebop. Welcome to Artist Bebop number 46, the weekly ramble. We are two days late because A, I lost track of time. I time traveled. Two, I... Man, I'm just off kilter. <laughs> but two, I recorded this two times before. And uh, I will just get into it. I'm going to start the timer. 22 minutes. That is the game. Here comes the ramble. So, yeah, the previous episode, I had lost my microphone. And I was agonizing. And it turned out it was right in front of me, right in front of the holder. I had just, I, I put it there and forgot that I had done that. So... I found it, and I go to record this week, and I've been having microphone issues with that, my, the, the lavalier, so I decided I'm going to get a new one. So next year, since this is New Year's Eve now, I will I'll have a new microphone for these episodes. That'll be nice, and I don't have to agonize about anything, I hope. <laughs> but yeah, that's the story. So here we are, and it's not the first time I've had to re-record an episode, so it's funny because you would think there would be a script. There isn't. And that's been the fascinating thing about starting these this year is that I, I don't, um, I can really see how uncohesive I am because as far as putting content into the world, I have always been limited to an edited version of me. And even when I do micro clips of this stuff, it's, I sound very well spoken and I'm not. <laughs> but that's okay. I, I like the episodes. I like doing these and I like the, uh, I like the feedback and I like the conversation that I get to have. And it, it really, in its own way, is kind of a sketch pad for things I'm going to do or things I want to do. And yeah, I, I think actually a lot of good ideas have come from this and the writing I've been doing. And yeah, with the holiday break, I, I kind of let myself lay back, which is something I think I learned this year. I guess I'm doing a retrospective. <laughs> How cheesy. No, um, <laughs> the top 10. But no, it, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, but yeah, it, sure. I, I think it's natural to reflect. I, I think it's, I don't know. I think it's funny how, uh, at least I, I ran across it a lot. People are like, oh, I don't do New Year's resolutions. I don't do... And I guess I don't really either, but it's natural, I think, that you come to the end of a calendar year and you reflect. And so I've been doing that, and I, I've, I've liked what I've done this year. I've, I've done a lot of marketing-wise. I've started projects like this uh, weekly ramble I'm going to get that new microphone, so I will be ready for, to have guests on. So I got my first one lined up. That'll be really cool. Check out at Cracker Jack Minifigs. Really cool, um, some really cool wood carving baseball players. I, lo I love those. So... It'll be cool to talk to him more. Cause I, I, uh, it's pretty cool. He, he uh, will uh, kind of send video messages back and forth and talk about different things. So it seems like we have some commonalities. So I'm eager to get into it. And then, yeah, I'm going to start. I might bring back some people. A lot of people I talked to, it was during COVID. So I'm curious to see, I guess, what happened from then. Who done it? 
Oh man. And then uh God I'm I'm so so out of it, I think. Yeah. It's it's early morning and I'm I don't know, you might hear child noises this episode, more so than usual. Sometimes you hear them, but you will see. Yeah, big, big development. A lot of my, probably was off kilter this week, is a few nights ago now, I... I advise for the nonprofit Empowering Youth for Tomorrow, and which is based out of Houston, but I've been remotely working with them. And they went through some changes this past year. And then I was asked if I would consider taking over as like CEO. So it's a cool opportunity. It's part of how that happened is my friend Deborah, who's an artist locally, I've been talking about a space. And <clears throat> I had talked about the, the way to really do it. I guess there's a few ways you can approach a gallery. A gallery that is just there commercially is compromised to a good degree. I guess there's compromises in everything, but there's overhead. Gallery owner, whoever's running it, needs to cover that overhead. So how that's done, in my view, is it's whatever sells for that person and control the most easily. And I, over the years, I've thought about it a lot. And really, it just comes down to who's running it and what they can sell most easily. It's not, it's funny, I'm looking at the pictures around me. My son goes around and makes everything crooked. If you ever see that in videos I'm doing, and it bugs you, uh, you can blame my children. It's all of them. Yes, not just my son. But my son is the most fervent about it. But I digress. <laughs> the, the, the gallery, that's ADHD for you right there. <laughs> I'm talking about something and I'm completely in something else. And that is why this is the weekly ramble. But I... <laughs> okay, so the galleries, it, it, it comes down to whoever's in charge and what they can move most easily. I guess there are some works where you know, they just move easily, have mainstream appeal, but that is what a gallery is. And so there's no room sometimes for diversity, I think. And that, it, it's cool, not what I wanna do. So, and, and Deborah has a frame of reference, the, the space we had before the pandemic, where, you know, we just showed what we wanted. And it really, it was art friends getting together to have a show every 90 days. And the beautiful thing about that, to me, was that we would do these shows and we'd do them together. We'd hang the shows. We This was our baby every 90 days. We'd make a flyer, pass them out. And the more we did them, the more we started to see sales. But what I felt is that at least the people that were really putting their energy into the show, the sales were irrelevant to a degree. I mean, it's nice to get sales. When there was a sale, artist, artist happy. 
But it was the fact that we did this thing, we got together, and sometimes the shows were, we had a full house. Sometimes it was the artists hanging out with each other. But that was cool either way, and even after the show. We'd go somewhere else, hang out, talk art. It was, to me, what is good about a live event? You know, as far as sales, I think it has its merits in terms of you did this thing, document, document everything. But that's my, that's what, I, something I've learned. And... I'll, I'll go back to an example. I think I've said this before, but when I first moved to uh, Fort Worth, I had found a cohort to pop up in parking lots with, because that's what I knew. I didn't know anybody here. And so I asked this bar that was by the museum in Fort, the museums in Fort Worth, the art museums. I said, could I, uh, could I use your, your parking lot on Saturday mornings? And, and that's where I started here because I didn't know any better so I had, <laughs> I had my baby strapped to me and here I am trying to stop traffic it was magical I've had some magical moments in my career and <laughs> but like I said stranger in a strange land and so lost myself in the tangent here but uh, I'm sure I will circle back to the point. Yes, so we had a day where we, I would make flyers for this thing, and it was me and the other artists. And one day it rained. So hard to do a parking lot show in the rain. You can do it. I just, yeah, it wasn't worth the effort it was, <laughs> it was slim pickings already so my friend freaks out and he's like yeah, oh my god we haven't taken the flyer down from social media and i was like look the chances anybody you know we're a parking lot show a two-man parking lot show the reason we put that flyer up is to show that we do stuff. Yeah, we want sales, but it probably came from people driving by. And it did, it, that was weird that that would happen. But <laughs> when I think about it, that was so uh, strange. Welcome. But again, beauty of art. You, you want, you know, you need money. Make something and sell it. You, as a creative, it's like I have all the inventory I need. I just need to figure out how to sell it so that I can make more. Vicious habit. Now, as I grow older, and kids and things come into the picture, I don't just put all the money back into what I'm doing, which is what I used to do. It, it's been, throughout my life, I think, a little easier because I don't, I don't want things. I don't want flashy cars. I don't, um, I mean, clothing-wise, you can probably tell I thrift. <laughs> and, and I love it. And because... Well, now, you know, I put money into my children. I put money into art supply. And that's, and I've always been very frugal with art supplies. Uh, lately, I have companies sending me stuff. So that's nice. So if you're out there, bring it. I'll make stuff with your whatever. Shout out to uh, Shuttle Art here. They've been using these markers. Yeah, the um, I've been doing these paper pieces on watercolor and ink and acrylic marker. So those are some of the supplies I got. 
and I've been having fun with it. And I've just been thinking about it. He's very thoughtful about this. I remember years ago, yeah, it was 2016. I came to Fort Worth. I don't know anybody. I saw this ad in, I think it was Craigslist. They were looking for writers and photographers for this online magazine. And so I pitched them that they should have an art section. And so I got to do that. And I would just pick, some of it was local and then some of it I would pick people online that I saw were doing well and I wanted to pick their brains. So this one guy would, I would see him post, had a, a good following and he had started early on Instagram is how he got that and just consistently. But that was the roots of my learning, seeing how this consistent, that's why we're doing the ramble for the third time is I want to be consistent and I feel bad that it's two days late now. But there goes my son. Let's see if we make it. How much? We got three minutes on the, no, six minutes? Yeah, six minutes on the clock. So, so I asked the artist about his pricing because his pieces were 30, like 30 something dollars. And he said, yeah, I call it blue collar pricing. I don't want my stuff to be unaffordable. And all his stuff was paper. And I kept that in mind. And, and my stuff, especially in terms of online, started with that in mind. But what was happening is that I got popular, which is good. And I say that so humbly. But, and thank you. <laughs> and, you know, I was getting more and more, and I was especially getting more commission work. And then when I looked at how much work I was putting into it versus getting my inventory bought out, I started to raise the price a bit. And I've been, I've struggled with that because I, I like, I always thought about He's like, you know, everybody should be able to afford art. And so this week I started doing the paper stuff, mainly to do video samples for some of these companies. But, but I made these small little watercolor things and they're so much easier to make time lapses of. They're so much easier to interact with the people who watch my stuff. And I just, I've enjoyed it on many levels. And I've started to sell those. And I have them on the lower end of the price scale. And that's something that if it does get in high demand, I can more easily create and be able to not feel overworked on. So, and they're really cool. They're... I really, a lot of my painting is loose. Now, these are still pretty loose, but it's a little more drawing. And what I noticed is I've been doing them for two weeks. I kind of, I think I talked about like doing them out of panic too. <laughs> They've quelled my anxiety. They've served multiple, multiple purposes, but that they also kind of fit maybe a niche I didn't know I was kind of looking for. But the other thing that they did is, since I've been hitting them so consistently, I went to work on a an acrylic commission last night. And that, like, my drawing was a lot sharper. It was a... <laughs> Shout out to Dazed Cannabis in Massachusetts. They, one of their stores has a lot of my artwork. So they, they got a, 
another big order for their new store. And in the other one, there's a portrait of Elon Musk on Joe Rogan smoking a J. <laughs> and uh, so I, I did another one for them by request. And I just noticed, like, how easily the, the drawing part of it flowed out. Like, man, I nailed that. And that's because I've been using line markers. And so that's more line work. And it's another example of how just using multiple mediums strengthens all of these art muscles. So it's good stuff. But yeah, um, I'm excited about the new microphones. I don't like the new microphone. I need a couple, but I don't like the expense. That sucks. <laughs> but yeah, it'll after New Year. I'll have it in the New Year next episode. Should be nice, Chris Basie. Audio. It's funny because I, I think I didn't used to notice, but yeah, the, the past two episodes, I noticed the voice difference, and I noticed what a good mic can really do, and it's so worth it. So, yeah, it was sad. I went, I went to edit this episode, and they were just crackling everywhere. And I think I wrote about it where I saw a presentation once where you can have the poorest visuals. But if your audio is good, the thing is still watchable. But if your audio is not, it's unwatchable. And since I do video and audio of this, it is both unwatchable and unlistenable. If I put up that much crackle, here's the post ramble. Post ramble. Happy New Year. You're celebrating. Of course, be safe. Drive responsibly. No. <laughs> uh, again, I'm in cliche land. But whatever, man. I love you all. And I will see you in the new year. So excited about everything. And thank you. Thank you if you've supported any silliness I do. Thank you for uh, your kind notes, your DMs. I'm so thankful. And genuinely. So, I will see you next year. Welcome to my world. Santa's world. Bebop.